So the first order of business in vaccine conversations is getting to know your audience. This takes listening. You may think you know the parents of your patients, but the COVID-19 pandemic has had different impacts on all of us. So listen for your audience's vaccine attitude type, trauma, and shortcuts. So what does that mean? Most parents fall on a spectrum or range of vaccine attitude types, which will influence from the beginning how deep and useful your conversation is. Another element to acknowledge is that every parent has suffered trauma during COVID-19. One consequence of this trauma is that parents are still in survival mode, which means lots of creating mental shortcuts. So many decisions need to be made every day to protect the family that people are exhausted and they don't wanna be judged. So psychologically, most parents are relying on mental rules of thumb to help simplify their lives. We call this heuristics, which means the mind develops shortcuts so we don't have to think so hard about every single decision because it's exhausting. <laughs> but unfortunately, this can lead to trouble interpreting risk, which leads to decisions about vaccines that aren't in the best interest of the family, especially when families are also hearing stories and misinformation about vaccines from their family, friends, news, and social media. So let's first talk about parent vaccine attitude types. We can understand the shift to COVID vaccination attitudes better when we understand pre-COVID vaccine attitudes. Before COVID, from one third to one half of parents were an automatic yes to vaccines. 32 to 56% were immunization or health advocates versus 35% now who say they will get the COVID-19 vaccine for their kids right away. Before COVID, 37% would go along with the crowd or were considered fence sitters, the yellow and red slices on the left, which could be considered your wait and see group for COVID vaccine today, which is 33% on the right in yellow. Before COVID, the 7% of worried parents would be unlikely to get vaccinated or would request alternate schedules or vaccine exemptions compared to 25% of parents who say they would definitely not get their child vaccinated with COVID-19 vaccine as of September, 2021. The percent of parents currently against COVID-19 vaccination is much higher than it used to be for other routine childhood vaccinations, which is likely a combination of many factors. In fact, all pathways to vaccine hesitancy include three parts, the facts, the culture, and the mind. So let's talk about the factors that contribute to one in four parents definitely not wanting to give their child a COVID vaccine. Here you can see an example of how the facts, the culture, and the mind can work together to lead to vaccine hesitancy. The facts might include misinformation on the internet. We see this every day in the office. So a parent might say, I read that COVID-19 vaccine causes infertility. I think we've all heard that one. Now the culture could be anti-science. In their heads, they might be thinking science isn't always right. Or anti-medicine, like medicine has hurt people on purpose in the past, which is certainly true. And then you combine that with what's happening in the parent's mind which during this time of stress in the pandemic is often this anecdotal thinking. So the parent might say to themselves, one case of a vaccine side effect is enough for me. It's easier to make a decision when you're thinking like that. What's really important in all three of these categories is that you acknowledge that how they're feeling is true and it's correct to them. And in the middle category, it's so important to acknowledge the role that systemic and institutional racism have contributed to culture and the power that that has over the pathway overall. Anecdotal thinking is a type of mental shortcut, but also a basic parental instinct to protect your unique child, even if the vaccine is proven safe for thousands of children. So you can see that with all of these categories, what the parent is thinking is understandable, and it's important to acknowledge that. 
So let's practice. A good response to the rumor around fertility issues after vaccination is to acknowledge that you've also heard that, but you realize that it's not true. People are more likely to listen if you start your response with an agreement or an acknowledgement. Also acknowledge the cultural factors, such as anti-science or anti-medicine, that may be contributing to the parent's understanding of the misinformation, if appropriate. When you acknowledge the cultural factors that are influencing uh, or may be contributing to the parents believing some misinformation, you might find that there are people in your life or even situations in your life that have made you feel the same way. And this is where you can empathize. So you can say, I totally understand. Every parent is just trying to protect their kids. I definitely feel that way too. But even the rare risk of some proven adverse events gets nowhere close to the real risk of your kid getting COVID-19 or spreading it to a family member. I felt so much relief when I vaccinated my own kids, and I really didn't realize how anxious I was until afterwards. Here are some common shortcuts used by parents that you may recognize in yourself, in your family, or in future conversations you have with parents. So here's one. What sticks in my mind is more likely to happen. The easier an event is to remember, the greater the likelihood the event will occur. We know this isn't true, but this is a common shortcut that we use. The next one is do no harm. So a bad outcome is easier for the parent to accept if it occurs because of inaction rather than action. That makes the parent feel that there is less individual responsibility for the outcome. So for example, choosing not to vaccinate eliminates all risk of a vaccine side effect versus choosing to vaccinate for something more common like getting COVID-19. Then there's the known unknown dynamic. A known risk, like the effects of COVID-19 disease, is more acceptable than an unknown risk, like the effects after a COVID-19 vaccine. So even though we know that one is greater than the other, because one is known, it seems more dangerous. So even if we know that a known risk of COVID-19 disease is greater than the unknown, the unknown seems much scarier. Then there's compression. Rare risks are overestimated, like the side effects of the vaccine, and common risks are underestimated, like the risk of COVID-19 disease right now. So let me give you some numbers to back that up. So of the 4.5 million known cases in children up to 17, there have been 763 deaths from COVID since the start of the pandemic. And we usually only see about 100 deaths from flu every year. We've downplayed the impact of COVID on children a lot throughout this pandemic, but it's still clearly a tragedy. Because of how kids have been represented during this pandemic, parents are able to use their minds to say it's not as big a problem. So every parent conversation must include assessment of, or at least consideration of, an individual's vaccine attitude type, what trauma they've experienced during the pandemic, and whether that has led to certain shortcuts that are getting in the way of their vaccine decision making. You'll get a sense by the middle of the conversation where they are now. And that could generally be categorized as a definitely yes, a movable middle, or a definitely no. And they can also fall in between. The parents you see first are probably gonna be the ones that want vaccine right away. And those are gonna be the definitely yes parents. You can share in their anxiety, relief, even joy. But the next group you're gonna encounter is probably the movable middle. So here are some next steps for parents for you to talk to in each category. For the definitely yes parents, make sure appointments are available or refer them to somewhere nearby where they can safely get the vaccine. Feel free to give them the CDPH COVID hotline number 312-746-4835 to sign up for at home or in school vaccination events if you need to. For the movable middle parents, these are the conversations where you can really make a difference. After listening a good deal, tell them a part of your personal story 
that relates to theirs, or simply say, I can understand that. Being a parent is so hard these days. Dig in. Ask about their personal pros and cons, like what worries you most about your child getting vaccinated? Possible reassuring statements could be, scientists at Pfizer, FDA, and CDC took their time studying the vaccine to find the best dose. It worked and it was over 90% effective with the fewest side effects at the dose that they chose for five to 11 year olds. It ends up being a third of the adult Pfizer dose and a smaller volume. Your child can get it safely with other vaccines. So you'll find out a lot from the parent by responding to each answer with empathy or a personal story. Ask, what would be a good thing about your child being protected against COVID? Or how would it change how you felt about school, sports, other everyday activities? Feel free to add your own feelings or those that you've heard from your family and friends. Reinforce the convenience of getting vaccinated, that they can get it today, that it'll cause less time away from school because vaccinated kids don't have to quarantine when they're in close contact with a case at school, and less anxiety about whether they'll get sick from any of their activities or spread it to someone sick at home. Here's an example of a question that may be holding some of those in the movable middle back from vaccinating right away. You can say in response, though long-term side effects are unknown at this time, they're unlikely to occur. COVID-19 vaccines have been administered to millions of people, including pregnant women and people with weak immune systems, since December 2020, with no identified long-term side effects. CDC has also shown us that their safety monitoring systems are the best in the world, and we can work with public health to track that. Now, for the definitely no parents, who are likely very vaccine hesitant, don't expect to convince them. Their beliefs are tightly held, but they may benefit from multiple empathetic conversations over time. So success here means simply agreeing to leave the door open for future conversations with you and work with the parents to agree on at least one action, such as scheduling another appointment to talk to them face-to-face -face, or encouraging the parent to read additional information that you give them. So in summary, listen first to determine vaccine attitude type, trauma, and the mental shortcuts of each parent. A combination of these factors determines what decision-making stage they're in. The definitely yes category, the movable middle, and the definitely no. Each parent will need a different conversation, but they'll all need empathy and to hear your personal stories. Thanks for listening.